everybody. I'm Gene with Air Tanks Plus down here on the ground. We're out doing a body count here today of ground squirrels. We're in Modoc County in Northeast California. We thought we'd show you uh, the environment that we're in when we're out uh, shooting. We'll show you our uh, setup a little bit later, but uh, Roger's back there on Drone Boy. And uh, right now you can look down, you can see a uh, ground squirrel we took. And uh, let me go ahead and laser that for you, and I'll tell you what uh, distance we're at. Uh, we're right at 76 yards back to the truck, which is back that way. But anyway, this is a full-grown adult. Uh, ground squirrel here. These are a buildings ground squirrel. They're different than the uh, California ground squirrel. Uh, they're only about two-thirds the size of a California ground squirrel. And I don't know if you can see that from the drone footage, but here's an entry. And here's the exit on this particular one. We're shooting 35 grain, uh, either 217 caliber or 224 or 223. Same size as the ARs uh, shoot, uh, caliber-wise. But there's one. That's 78 yards back there. Come on, let's go over here, drone boy, and we're going to go take a look at a few more uh, as we go back here. You can see what happens uh, when these ground squirrels get into here. They create an area right here where the alfalfa uh, doesn't do so well. You can see this popped up through, but... Um, they kick the dirt when they're uh, digging holes and tunnels and all that sort of thing. So they, uh, they say, or we were talking to a farmer the other day, that they eat about 30 pounds worth of alfalfa in a year. Not only that, but it's very, very hard on equipment. Uh, if they put livestock in here, sometimes they can drop a leg in here and break it. I know you've heard those cliches before, but it is true. Um, so that's what's going on with the... Uh, ground squirrel uh, carnage that they create over here. Here's another squirrel. This one uh, is not quite a full adult here, but you can see we got a pretty, pretty good entry over here on this shoulder. It came out on this side here. That's another one. Let me laser that for you, and I'll tell you what that one is. That one's at 88 yards right there. We got a few more right in this area. Here's one right over here. This is an adult, and uh, this was a neck shot. Went right through the neck, and it actually pushed, you know, tissue up through its uh, nasal cavities here. But that's a full-grown one here. Let's see what that is. That's a female. They can run uh, litters anywhere from two to eight pups two times a year. So they, they're pretty prolific here. Notice they have a short tail. If you've seen the California ground squirrel, their tail goes out to about here, and they're a little bit bigger. So let's go look for a little more here. Um, come on down this way. I think I remember. Here's one over here. This is a big one. It's a full-grown one. And uh, let's see if we can figure out what, what happened to this one. This one's not showing a lot here. Well, I see the exit wound right here. You see right here at the back? Coming out, we're getting complete pass-throughs on these, although they are a hollow point. Uh, like I say, at 35 grains. Uh, let me laser that one for you. That one's 99 yards back to the uh, shooting uh, platform that we have. We actually uh, raise up off the ground. We're up to about 10 to 12 feet, so we can look down on them. Uh, it's a little bit harder for them to hide. If you're ground level, it's really, really hard to see them because... Uh, even though there's these bare paths that you see from, from Drone Boy out here, when you're sitting on the platform, it looks like it's solid because you're just kind of sweeping over and looking over the tops of the alfalfa uh, that they're growing out here. We're going to go out here a little farther here and see if we can find some more for you. And uh, I found a badger hole. Well, here's one right over here. Come on, Drone Boy. Let's go over here and look at this one. It's another adult right here. This one was a neck shot. You can see the back side. Come right through. Well, come on over here, sweetie. You can see right here where this came through. Uh, you know, when a, when, a, when a bullet passes through soft tissue like that, it cavitates and presses everything out. So um, that's what happened. That was a neck shot. That's almost instant death. Uh, and here's another one right here. Let me show you this one. Um, this is kind of a juvenile, might be a year old, but I want you to look what happened with this one. Um, 
And we've got we've got innards hanging out here. So these things will actually <laughs> pull the uh, you know, the uh, gastrointestinal tract right out of them uh, if you hit them in the right spot. And this is a perfect example of that. Hopefully you can catch that, Roger. But that's uh, that's pretty devastating. This is the this is the exit side of the bullet. They expand out quite nicely. They're 100% lead. We put no antimony or anything like that or tin um, because these are assuaged uh, slugs. So let's go over here. Like I say, we've already been over here to this guy. So you can see here, I don't know if you can pick up the color, but uh, there's, a, there's a squirrel turd right there, and it's just green as all can be right there. They, they just eat a lot of uh, alfalfa. What happens is uh, their normal daily events, they come out in the morning at about daybreak and they'll feed till about 10 to 11 and then they go take a nap. And then they come out later in the day, anywhere from three to four o'clock and then they're all out. They need to eat before they go back in their den, their burrow, uh, before so they can get underground at night. Um, come on down here, well, let's look a little bit more. I have found a badger. Uh, den earlier here, but I may not be able to find it. You think it would be easy, but not so much Because it's just kind of hard to uh, See even if you're down here So I think I had uh, some other squirrels up here a little bit ago and I was running this uh, Tire track This field out here has a pivot and the uh, irrigation system runs 360 degrees around here they track it with GPS satellite telemetry, and they can tell exactly how much water they're putting down per hour, per day, per week, in any given area. And uh, it'll also take into account the wind, so the water, the rain that they make out of these things, um, gets the same amount of water on it, uh, even though the wind may be blowing or it might be cloudy. This all makes a difference, believe it or not. So um, th this is uh, farming has become high tech. Um, in order so they can make some money. Most of the feed that comes off this is alfalfa, and uh, most of it is sold to the dairy uh, industry, guys that are running a, uh, a milking operation or a dairy. Uh, so that's where most of this goes. Some of it goes to Southern California for horses in the wintertime. I understand alfalfa is a little bit hot to run in horses, so they mostly feed them hay or grass. Uh, but in the wintertime, when they can use the extra cal calories just trying to stay warm, they'll feed them alfalfa. And a lot of that goes down to L.A., uh, San Diego, and that area. They really can't grow this down there. It just gets too hot. And uh, we're at about 5,000 feet here, about a mile high, uh, as far as the topography and the elevation we're at. So that, uh, that's kind of what we're at over here. But you can still see all of this digging all the dirt and such that these guys uh, dig up. And the farmers just love us to come out here and help them out with this. And, you know, we're glad to help. So um, we're, we've been having a lot of fun. We came in here uh, Sunday afternoon. We actually hit hail, sleet, snow, and rain coming up. But now today we'll probably get up to about 80 degrees. So it uh it's really the weather is quite pleasant actually we do get a lot of high wind up here um a lot of time you can't see this from drone boy but up here there's kind of a mountain range that comes through here and then back over here is another mountain range the winds normally come out of the west and drop down off that mountain and it just howls down through here so uh it can be uh it can be a little uh, difficult sometimes getting your windage uh, right on your shots when you're placing those. Okay. All right. Well, that's what we've got right now. There, there's a lot more out here, but like I said earlier, sometimes it's hard to figure out where they're at because they blended the ground so easily and it's hard to pick them out. But we wanted to show you a little bit of uh, what we're doing up here, how we do it, and, uh, you know, maybe give you guys some pointers on some of this stuff. A lot of times, you know, the, the best way to learn is just go out here and do it. Um, and for you guys that aren't able to come out here and do it, maybe you can uh, enjoy uh, what we're uh, showing you here. 
while we're out here. Um, we'll go home tomorrow, that's Thursday. We normally come up for three to four days at a time to make it worthwhile. It is a five hour drive from Sacramento up here. Oh, here's a squirrel up here. Come on, drone boy, let's go look at this one. So here we got one coming up. And here's one right here. This one uh, looks like, oh, okay. You can't tell actually if that's entry or exit, but if we roll them over, we've got this here. I'm gonna say right here, it's kind of swollen up, so that would be the exit. It swells up, it just uh, turns that tissue into jello. It just emulsifies it when it goes through. And here's the entry port right here. That shuts them down pretty quick, uh, although they, we call it the tail dance. Sometimes these guys get to flopping around here and their tails start spinning, looks like a propeller. And I know I shouldn't laugh, but it, it's pretty amusing. So come on, let's go back up to the trailer. Uh, right now, guys, we're at uh, 90, 95 yards right here where I'm standing back to the shooting rig, back to the pivot over here. So come on, let's go back up to the, uh, up to the truck. There's another big mound of dirt. And we're coming back up. We're closing in on the truck. We get them pop up here uh, occasionally. And uh, we actually have to do a lot of hold under because I run a 75 yard zero. Roger likes a 50 yard zero. And uh, you know, we gotta hold a, a lot of hold under on your reticle in order to hit them. But it's pretty dramatic when that slug hits that uh, squirrel and makes this big pop. And uh, it, uh, it's fun. So here's some more uh, diggings up here. They got farm hands that come up here and make sure all this stuff is working right. And uh, we run into them all the time. They'll actually go, hey, they're over there. Go over there and get them. And you can see here this dirt right here. While we're up here shooting, they're back digging holes. Right here and here, that's all fresh diggings. Um, but uh, if you look up here on top of the trailer, I'm 5'7", and I come to right about here. And uh, by the time you get done and we're up here, we're right around, oh, I don't know, 12 to 13, 14 feet high. That allows us to look down on the squirrels. Even if they're skinking along, we can, we can spot them. Um, Roger's been shooting off this table. He's running a 217, 35 grain swage slug using a Corbin press, 100% lead. And I'm running a 224 over here. Okay, we've just been experimenting around with twist rates and such. This is a one in 14 twist rate. It's a green mountain barrel. Uh, it's all turned down, but it's in a, a Air Force Condor platform. The Air Force uh, platform is very, very easy to get the power you need to run slugs on these. And like I said earlier, we're running about a thousand feet a second. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go up the ladder here. And uh, if uh, Drone Boy, if Roger can get you up here, I'll show you how we do this. We actually have these uh, shooting tables, shooting stand, and we can run almost 360 on this so we can shoot all the way around but we don't normally do it we take sides 180 unless they're popping up real close we'll shoot over to here and we just sit on here and uh, we use this we go sometimes if we uh, want to take a break we'll spot for each other we're going Roger we got one at 125 and we know our holdovers on this we're using vortex um, what are these? Uh, the Vortex. Roger, what are these uh, Vortex scopes? We don't remember. Um, yeah, okay. First focal plane scope. I think they're 6 to 24. I actually put my loop hold on here. The second focal plane scope. I like it to get a nice clear picture. But uh, here's, our, uh, here's our slugs right here. As you can see, these are 35 grains. I'm gonna hold one of these up for you. Hopefully you can get a picture. 
that little hollow point in there gets in there and spans out and you get it flat base. And uh, we make a lot of them because we shoot a lot up here. <clears throat> you know, it's a tank here. Mine is down on the floor. And I really can't tell you what this is right now, but it's coming soon. And um, we have a pad for our shoulders, etc. cetera, We've got binoculars and, of course, our rangefinder. And uh, this is where we come up here. And this, this table could shoot all the way around this side. Now, if we take our lunch break, Roger has this real nice uh, safari type uh, setup. We get under there, get out of the sun. The sun's pretty intense up here. You know, we're much closer to the sun uh, up here than we were if we were on the ground. So we, we hang out underneath there. We have our lunch and uh, just kind of kick back and gather our thoughts, seeing what we're up to and what we're going to do. So, guys, that's it uh, for us here today, uh, Wednesday. Uh, what's the date today? Wednesday, June 10th at a quarter to 1 p.m. So we got a little breeze. We're probably about 10 miles an hour out of the south, southeast, crossing this way. So uh, that's it, guys. We'll talk to you down the line. And uh, hope you enjoyed our little walkabout here. And we'll catch you soon. All right.